God is everything working. Aha. So check looks good. my looks settings, good. my running. Nah, Dan, you know what? I, I know we know we usually close show close the show with um a banger, you know. But yesterday was well this week, Zim Hip Hop was like, you know what? Let's do a temp check. First there was this. If my phone will unfreeze. <laughs> is it Android? What's going on? You know very well I don't have an Android phone. I have connectivity issues because of a certain provider who has given cuck internet all week. I'm not going to mention names. What? If you call the helpline, you might hear Dan's voice. I don't know. Maybe. Elon is not yet live here. <laughs> Yo, why is it okay? It's frozen, frozen. That's wild. That is actually quite wild. Your internet froze my phone. <laughs> well, we ah, vamp. <laughs> ah, Philip, be serious. I am very serious. <laughs> It's, it's it's not my fault. I have now disabled. I've had to disable the thing. I'm now on. Um, yeah, the network is taking a while to connect. I am now switching to mobile. Okay, so how is your Zoom working? All right. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm routing it through thing hotspot. I, I I've had to because this thing keeps popping on and off. It's it's annoying. It's working nice over here. Oh, then we've been suffering. This do, 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 do. You know what I really hope? I hope that like you meet someone and they recognize your voice and, and then immediately triggers all their trauma and all their anger. They're like, I know that voice. I know that smug voice. The voice of you mean. things. Things are going well. Shaka Rongeka, <laughs> as they say. There we go. Shaka Rongeka. Dan, have you decided? Bari kundi tsona, bari kundi sona, kuda kundi ponta Bari pakona, bari kundi sasa, bari mumu section Ndiwa na Judas, pangwena na Peter, mekunyu za jeso Andiwa tembi, awa na mesi, matori masiki Dimi muno, kazira tafura vameri pwena wengi wangwa Asi minya denga, dimi muno sipa wakangu wa yangu Baba no take it and I'm hoping we get in the group my gang Azimi ya denga ndi mimu no sipa ukangu yang Baba gawanda macho matori my enemy Oh jaja kachinji kanyo ten start to the family Baba gawanda macho matori my enemy Oh jaja kachinji kanyo ten start to the family Since I was young, since I was a beginner, I always pray in this affambe murim. God is the greatest, he got me Zaginia, so nothing can touch me, no money and no swim. Pese bandiri, I'm speaking ideas. I cannot focus on drinking my beers. And details and daddy, so when you see me, just give me ten mari, you see me past tears. Clap for others, kana maku, rest bahana kupose maku. Nah, then, I've heard the gem, did you hear the gem? Coming up out of the time, Paul. Just press play. I heard it. Sounds alright. Then this, uh, this is yeah. a fire song. So anytime you got buff dudes doing pull-ups in the jungle, you know you know it's about to be fire. That's, that's, that's what you need. One two one two one two one two. This is not the time to be playing this, Philip. Our listeners get it wherever they get it, bro. Okay, we gotta keep on their toes. There's no formula here, bro. 
That's enough. Yeah. That's enough, Philip. Yeah. Let's get into this. Now, Let's get now, into now this. we've started off on, on the right note, with the right level of energy, you know. Damn, we got a lot of Yo, clips. boys and girls, welcome one more again to another episode. Um, we we we're, we're gonna we get we worked hard on this, so let's let's make sure that it's included. Jump up in the tone. Everybody got a run. Two broke wind boss in the tone. Listen close to the sound. I need that guy and feel tired. Baby, bring in the fun. With the podcast vibes, we not stop till the morning sun. Every episode got me laughing, can't control my smile. Talking about the latest news with the unique style. From Zimbabwe to the world, they spreading good vibes. Keeping it real and entertaining. They're on the rise. Two broke twin boys. <laughs> Everybody get guy and feel child in control. We gonna keep moving. To the podcast, we are keep moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Philip. I did not uh, turn on the, the thing for you. Mm. It's okay. Bro. Well, listen, I've been vibing to it for both of us. So, you know, if that makes you feel better. Oh, the outro. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're very, at least you got to hear a little bit of it. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, are y'all good to go? Sound of the signal. Let me hear a drum Welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast. This is Two Broke Twimbles, as you heard from the intro. My name is Danny That Guy, aka Denias, aka Denimbi, my life for entertainment, aka Denford Wigumaraini, aka Danos the Mad Titan, aka I'm done with these streets. Put me in the delegation that's going to the Olympics, Hyundai. We can fill up a plane together, aka Akuna Moon when it done move. Unmistakable, unreviewable, unquestionable. That you will not block my road, bill. Patrick for water bill. Phil Chad again from the Blast, the Big Boss, where we get Finza P, Sexy Nolovu, Filthy Phil, Phil on Musk, DJ Mkardi, and of course, Shamati Tango Road Drink. Dan, before I even forget. So, we had a, we had a crucial time as a barber. We had a crucial time. Can I, Visitors are coming. I, yeah, we had, that's what I'm saying. We had a crucial time. Can I Urichi in the top of brass? Because. Mm-hmm. Decisions have to be made. Yeah. My visitors, the, the Vienzis yes, are coming. Yes, yeah. The Vienzis are coming. You got to bring out the nice china. The Vienzis are coming. Put the doilies on the TV. We're, we're yeah. sorting out. I've just realized, Dan, that I've been recording an audition for 10 minutes and there's no waveform, but it's fine. I've got a backup. <laughs> so it's cool. I'm just going to leave that. Fix it. No, Fix it. I'm, I'm, I'm using the desk. I'll record off the desk. It's fine. So. We've, we've, we've got visitors, right? And you mm-hmm. know, with the visitors, come chi, per diems. With the visitors, mm-hmm. come chi, fuel allowance. With the visitors, come chi, 
entertainment budget. You've got to take them out. You've got to take them to Gawas. You've got to show them out. You've got to show them sites out of Zimbabwe. Maybe go to Gonare Show. Maybe, or, or as someone that we spoke to earlier, Gonare Show. No names mentioned. Uh, you've got to take them to Matropos, Vic Falls, ETC, ETC. We are trending right now, Phil. You should mention. It. Oh, anyway, oh, oh I'm, eeyoh, we'll get to that. But anyway, <laughs> so, maybe if, if you're even a lower ranking official, you're like, yo, I've, I've, I've had to deal with this Aqua, with this company, the single cab, Hilux. Now all of a sudden they're saying, yo, my mans, roll the LP200 Land Cruiser. My mans, you've, you've got to drive the Fortuna. You're part of the convoy. Big things are gone. And then on the other side, there are Schengen visas being given up for Perry. And, you're Perry. Like, and you've, got to, you've got to decide, yo, where is it at? Do I want to go to Perry? Speaking oh. of which, I'm in the middle of a Schengen application. Uh, so cool. there's nothing de- there's nothing dehumanizing like that. But anyway, oh, we'll get into- I'll even get into another a worse one. <laughs> it's even worse than that. Uh, today we got we got stories today. Today's gonna be just personal <laughs> stories. So are you so <laughs> where do you go? Do you go to Perry, you know, and get that Euro stipend and accompany our three athletes? Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> List them. List them. <laughs> List the seven. I'm not even trying to. I'm not trying to be disparaging to our, our athletes. I love you. If you've dedicated your life to the, your craft, shout out to y'all. I'll be watching y'all at the opening ceremony tomorrow. But Dan, name the seven athletes. Let's go. All right. Well, actually, Phil, I have listed them in our talking points today. I have a nice infographic. Damn it. Okay, fine. We'll I've get included. to them later. But so I'm so I'm saying <laughs> before we get onto that, where are you going? Are you doing Sadak? Are you doing Perry? So, full disclosure, I'm actually part of the team that is eating some of the local bag. <laughs> Not- <laughs> you bastard, I knew it. <laughs> Not personally, of course, but... Uh- no, no, not in a not in a personal. My life does not change in any way in a personal capacity. But the organization that I work for has a, a very small. It's a very small PR media bag. <laughs> but but yeah, there's a there's a small bag there. Uh, yes, Sadek. Yeah, Sadek. Ah. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at the roads being built. I'm like, we built this brick by brick I'll in a week. Take this. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what. Well, Okay, here we go. Tangent number one. You know, I'm going to be even... Let me, let, me do, let, me, let me bring up my mind map. I'm going to do a mind map so I stay on track. Okay. Tra- tangent number one. Guys, okay. I don't know. I don't know what the planning process was. I don't know if people forgot. I don't know if the budget had been allocated. People chowed the cash and then they realized, yo, we actually need to build these roads. I don't know if someone asked questions and they're like, oh, snap. I guess I have to build these roads. Did we have to repair all the roads all at the same, same time, time. <laughs> during the week? Road. Do you know, Dan, do you know how crazy, do, do you know how poorly planned this road repair process is? They closed the road that leads to Hellenic yesterday. So mm-hmm. if you had a child that went to Hellenic, you couldn't drop them off at school. You had to drop them aboard the road. And tell the, the child that goes to Hellenic, just cross over, just walk. And it's I don't know. Character building. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the type of child that would be attending Hellenic. I don't think they're the type of children, you know, that willingly do long distances without trying to close the rings on their Apple watches. You know what I'm saying? So I've got a, a my, my cousin's in town because there's a there's a science fair and he's displaying at the science fair at. Um, Celebration, so I'm intimately aware of this. Shout out to him for making the the, the African finals. He's he he, he, he invented or well they, well they created um, a perpetual elec- uh, electrical in, um, production device, a device that perpetually creates um, electricity using magnetic induction. I'm very proud of the young man. You know, he's doing big things, and it's cool seeing all these these kids with little science projects. You know, it's it's dope. You know, this the future's so bright. The future's so bright, but. Right, number one, road repair. Okay, so these guys are like, listen, okay, this guys, and so and this guy, we need to we need to fix Churchill. So I got, when we repair Churchill, at the same time, let's repair Second Street Extension, because obviously the, the same person who uses Churchill is not going to use Second Street Extension, even though those roads may intersect and those are probably two of the busiest roads in the city. 
What? You know, here's another idea. You know, you know, you know Westgate, Lamagundi? Let's repair that road. But at the same time, let's repair all the roads surrounding Lamagundi. So people are just trapped in this Dan, you know, like traveling in the ride these days. It's like playing Pac-Man. <laughs> like, it's literally like playing Pac-Man. You drive one way, cinder block. You drive another way, road closed. You drive this way, nothing but dust. You drive this way, nothing but cones. Like, wha- guys, bro, how do I get where I want to go? Make it make sense. Uruku deepisa, Uruku deepisa. For our non shona speakers, I'm telling Phil that he is making it deep. Um, first of all, yes, it's tough, guys. Yeah, it's tricky. But you'll be thankful by the time we reach September. Because now, those of you who drive on the roads that lead to locations that will be used by SADC, it will be smooth. Smooth driving. Mm-hmm. You'll be grateful. If you don't use such roads, well, clearly you're not affected by this. <laughs> Except for all the cars that are on your roads right now trying to avoid those other roads. <laughs> Secondly, Phil, when have we as Zimbabweans ever been good at planning? <laughs> clearly, that's not how sometimes you just do. Mm. Just do. Those are Zwanong Bed. For those of you who are non shona speakers, we will see it in the in the front. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite grateful that my work um, almost everywhere that I've had to go in the past like couple of weeks is in the same sort of it's in the same um, sort of general area so I haven't had to cross over these uh, these roadworks um, but Philip mm-hmm. let's uh, I know we've gone on a couple of tangents mm-hmm. let's uh, let's bring things back on track this is why I'm here I'm the track backer um <laughs> Let's start off with some Africans, specifically this week, Zimbabweans doing big things around the world. Big Huge team. shout out to Rachel Chino Uriri, who was announced as uh, one of the opening acts for Sabrina Carpenter's uh, worldwide tour. What? I know, uh, she's Sabrina. doing big things. She's doing big things. I think I, meant, I, I might have yeah. met a relative of hers this week. Um, I'll tell you more about that off air. But shout out to her, man. Rachel's doing big things. We need to get on the shout podcast. Shout out to Rachel, man. And so, again, I... I've only seen Sabrina Carpenter on Elon's algorithm, but she's a big pop star. She's got songs that are in the, at the top, right at the top of the hot hundred. She's she's the it girl pop wise right now. You know what I'm saying? So she's doing. She's she'll be touring across Europe and the UK next year. And uh, she announced that uh, on tour with her will be Rachel Chinoudiri, who will be an opening act for uh, nine of the shows across seven countries. Uh, out there in Europe, the short and sweet tour. So congratulations, Rachel. Man, Rachel Chinoori is doing big things. And uh, I think I, I I can see talk or chatter about her online. I feel like she's about to pop off, just like in the pop scene. Nah, man, I, I, I've, I've had I've had her album on repeat for a while. It's, it's one of my favorite go-to. So, like, Sabrina when, Carpenter or Rachel? Rachel, I don't know who Sabrina Carpenter is. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you, dog. Yeah. But yeah, The Hills. It's, it's so when, sad. When, she, when she's I, literally I, the biggest pop star right now. And I'm like, I... Couldn't me? I couldn't. Like the, the way I don't even. I couldn't pick her out of a crowd. I was putting someone on to Rachel the other day, uh, and they were like, "Yo, who is this?" And I was like, "This is Zuma." And they're like, "What?" Phil, so you'll get us taken down. We're getting taken down anyway. <laughs> no, you, we are. We are not. It's okay. We don't get taken down for Vault's JT songs. <laughs> this is me talking over this Rachel Chinoiridi song so that it doesn't get recognized by the algorithm. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Streamed in Rachel. I'll Still talking it. about some Africans doing it big, specifically Zimbabweans this week. A hey, uh, Liverpool have announced their preseason tour of the United States. Uh, they start next week, and in that preseason tour is none other than Zimbabwean footballer Trey Nyoni, or shall I say, Zimbabwean or born to Zimbabwean parents. He's part of the twenty-eight member squad that is part of our on on slot side out. Uh, in the United States. So if you if there's any Zimbabweans out in America and you're wondering, should I go watch Chelsea, Arsenal, or Liverpool in their American tour? Hey, if you don't have a team preference, go watch Zimbabwe and train Yoni as part of the Liverpool squad. Mm-hmm. Um, also, a huge shout out to Zimbabwe senior men's rugby team, the Sables, who this week uh, defeated the hoodoo, the, 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 the curse, and finally defeated Namibia after 23 years. Imagine, Wait, what? for the past 23 years, Zimbabwe has not defeated Namibia in rugby. There's five people in Namibia. What are you talking about? <laughs> the last time... Thank you. The last time... Hey! Some, is that good? Some, thank you. Huh? 
Jen, do you know how many people complain about us eating on the podcast? And here you are, just proudly professing a grilled, mm. huh? a grilled cheese sandwich. Bastard. Mm. I hope this doesn't, I hope she's, I hope she's still planning on making dinner. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, that, you know, I just got, I just got terrible flashbacks to the, to the way Dan eats. Dan eats like he has worms, guys. You know, the thing is like, if you see me and you see Dan, I probably weigh twice as much as Dan. But every time we'd load up for a meal, Dan would be eating like that something. meme, but in one plate. Let me, t- <laughs> let me tell you something hilarious. When I was dating Taz, right? Mm. She just casually commented, like, are you like on a diet or something? I was like, no. And then he's like, yeah, because you don't eat as much as other men. I was like, wait, what? what? <laughs> yeah, like my dad specifically. Mm. I was like, how much does your dad eat? Because all my life I've been told I eat too much. What? what? Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's why. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> this grilled cheese is fire, man. What the hell? Do we mm. even have the ingredients? Anyway. Mm. Mm. And guys, can you hear how Dan is living? Not only does Dan have bread, I don't need cheese. <laughs> No electricity <laughs> Bread. At, at 7 p.m. No, he's living good. I'm sure this was made on the gas. So anyway, um, yeah, so the last time that Zimbabwe defeated Namibia in senior men's rugby was in 2001. Um, in fact, we've played Namibia in, in modern times. We've played Namibia 34 times and we've only won three times. So um, those three times were all pre-2001. That's embarrassing. So, congratulations to Zimbabwe. This was, by the way, this was a major tournament. This is this is part of the Africa Cup, the Rugby Africa Cup, and um, yeah. So that was the semi final, Zimbabwe versus Namibia. Zimbabwe won thirty two ten. It wasn't even like a, a fluke. Back in back mm. in two thousand and one, it was like twenty four twenty three or something like that. I can't remember mm. the exact score, uh, but yeah. So this was so a dropping, now, a nice dropping. Exactly. So now Zimbabwe will be facing Algeria in the final. That's happening this Sunday. So, uh, wait, yeah, this is this happening. This, Zimbabwe wait, might no, actually wait, 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 time. Okay, let, let's rewind to Dan. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. you know, let's, not, let's not minimize our country's accomplishments, but did you say Algeria in the, is in the final? Yes, Algeria is in the final. The, 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 the rugby powerhouse that is Algeria. What, dude, Phil, who's in this Phil, tournament? Phil, you, Phil, have you, have you even, have you paid any attention to world rugby? Ooh. How do you know? Maybe Algeria right now is the Morocco of, of world rugby. I, 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 I admit that. And I'm looking, right now, I'm looking at their rankings. Uh, they are ranked 64th. No, wait. They, yeah, currently they're ranked 64th in the world. Hmm. So I wonder, was it an upset that they made it to the final? And does this mean you don't you don't make it an update? Chance? This isn't the final four, Dan. How you do you like? Does the quarters the same? Is like no? What the Zimbabwean ranking? Wow, Zimbabwe is currently ranked. Hmm. We're ranked higher than Algeria. Well, well, well. Mm. Our highest ranking, fun fact was 26 back in 2015. We were once the 26th best team. Well, well, well. Well, anyway, so Zimbabwe is in a major... Well, again, I haven't no, paid... We're currently ranked. We're currently ranked number 31. So we should, on merit, win. We are the favorites. We Yo, are the favorites no to win a final. Rugby, like, Look at that. Look, dude, no one plays mm-hmm. rugby. Like, no, no, think about it. Like, why are they so... like? There's so few rugby. Actually, you know what? I was going to say, let's call the, the rugby captain. Let me see if I have his number. I, I do. Uh, Hilton Dariki. I don't have his number. I do have his number. We used to go to the same gym. We used to gym down the road. But I don't know. I can right. get his number. Hilton. Hilton's my boy. Hilton's my boy. But you don't uh, have his number. We were part of a campaign together. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a minor oversight. But anyway, congratulations to Zimbabwe Sables. And uh, hey, if you're looking for something sporting to watch on Sunday and maybe you're not interested in Formula One, um, why don't you watch the finals? Zimbabwe versus Algeria at the Rugby Africa Cup. Are we going to talk about the Formula One? Did you watch it this weekend, Dan? 
in our room room watch it I, our I room, did room it update. probably the best race in quite some time the the radio well, the radio let me say, let the, me say the most is, exciting wah, the radio the radio yeah. wow oh radio wow <laughs> Lando, 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 please. Shout, okay, wait. Shout. Let me let me just finish. I've I've one more, one more, one more. Is Marvin doing it big? Then let's talk. Let's talk real quick about Formula One. Vroom vroom update. Okay. Finally, I was going to mention Team Zimbabwe who have jetted off to Paris as part of a, according to our information, um, permanent secretary, part of a 19 man team, or sorry, 19 person team. Mm-hmm. Uh, team Zimbabwe. Uh, Paige van der Westeisen. Van der. Re- How do you say that, Philip? Van der Westeisen. Van der Westeisen. Funny enough, I had a name. Growing up, growing up, I had I had a family called the Van der Westeisen. I grew up next next door to Van der Westeisen, so I know the name well. Shit, very nice. Yeah, Paige Paige is competing in uh, women's hundred meter freestyle swimming. Ruten Onyahora is competing in athletics women's marathon. Isaac Impofu is competing in athletics men's marathon. Um, Stephen Cox is competing in rowing. Nice men's single skulls. Uh, Danielson Ciprianos is competing in men's 200 meter backstroke swimming. Uh, Tapionashe Makarau is competing in athletics men's 200 meters and Maganakaishe Charamba is competing in athletics men's 200 meters as well. So congratulations to those seven athletes who will be representing Zimbabwe at Paris 2024. Do not jump in the sand, please. I beg of you and uh, enjoy. Uh, please bring back home at least a few medals. We would appreciate it. Yes. Okay, cool. So that's it. So let's talk vroom vroom. Um I'm just looking at all So guys. Seven. So like hockey team, nada. Soccer team, nada. Basketball team, nada. Water polo, nada. Like a water polo team once won a gold. But so nada. Um karate like we, we couldn't send mugo like mugo couldn't go represent us in some some judo or something all oh, those kicks he does on instagram and in the gym nay <laughs> mugo let me phone mugo and be like yo my neck was like <laughs> no one from your dojo could go no one <laughs> so okay real quick about room room right uh-huh. so um this pocket This past weekend was the Hungarian Grand Prix. <clears throat> There was a, a lot of very interesting talking points. I think two major ones that I wanted to focus on. The, the, let me start with the smaller one, but probably more interesting to us. Um, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen had a, a racing incident towards the end of the race, shall we say, where Max was trying to overtake Lewis. And uh, he locked up, and there was contact. That's never wheels. happened before. N- never ever has that happened. I'm shocked. Apparently, I'm shocked, Dan. That's a shocker. That's. I think any normal, reasonable person watching that race would be like, "What the hell is Max doing?" Anyway, when they interviewed Max afterwards, he was like, he fully blamed Lewis. He says, "Why did he turn into me?" <laughs> And Lewis, with the grace that he has shown over the years, simply said, hey, maybe it was just a racing incident. No one should be blamed for it. But I think he also knew that, hey, man, I don't have to say anything. Everyone will say everything for me. Hmm. Karen, uh, anyway, happened. the FIA decided that there was no, uh, there was no sanctions that were going to be a, you know, given to anyone. But the good news is that Max Verstappen came, I don't know, what was he, sixth? Something like that. Hmm. Outside the podiums and Lewis Hamilton Uh, took the third place. Furious. In number one and two, for the first time in a long time, McLaren took a one-two. For the first time since Lewis uh, was on their team, Dan. That's how long it's been. <laughs> oh, snap. Hey, hey. So, yeah, congratulations to that, uh, to McLaren. Now, that was the second incident that I was going to discuss. So, during the race, um, part of their strategy, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around this, right? But during their strategy, or during the race, part of their strategy included Uh, different t- different pit stop times, right? For both Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris. Lando Norris, of course, is probably the the more successful of the two. But I think Oscar Piastri has a has a quite a quite a, an exciting. It's two basically two young racers who both look like they're they're pretty good. Did you ever anyway, catch the drama of Piastri leaving Renault? Yes, I did. Mm. No, but did you did. like live or uh, did you watch it on like a Drive to Survive? Not live. So I, I, I watched it on Drive to Survive. Drive to Survive. The, the funny thing is, like, for all the drama that. Drive to Survive does. They actually downplayed how much drama that week was. Oh, it was, oh, that was one of the best weeks in Formula One. 
<laughs> Renault went from having four drivers to none in a week. It was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, so what happened? Part of their strategy was Oscar pitted um, before Lando. Mm-hmm. And then Lando pitted. And because of that, um, what do they call it? They call it a... Um, undercut. Step. What is it called? They're, they're trying to avoid the undercut. Because of... Yeah. So because of that, Lando overtook Oscar, even though Oscar was in the lead. So the team was basically saying to Lando, cool, because um, they were right in the front, right? So they were saying to Lando, like, okay, please let Oscar overtake you again so that we restore the original pecking order or the, region, uh, the original order. And Lando suddenly lost hearing. Lando was like, Oh, radio's too loud. Can't hear you. They continue until the final lap where Lando, and in fact, even before the final lap, Lando was all like, oh, tell him to catch up with me. Anyway, in the final lap, he finally slowed down and allowed Oscar to overtake him. And then Oscar took the number one spot and Lando took the number two. But you could just tell that it was a little bit weird. So I did want to ask Phil, just as, as part of this, mm-hmm. this situation. Some people say, if Lando wants to be a world champion, he's the closest to Max Verstappen, he has to be selfish. He mustn't put the team ahead of himself. There's nothing like being fair. You're in front, go for it. Take the win, take maximum points. You gotta be selfish. And other people were saying, no, he has to do the right thing. Oscar was the one who was ahead and it was only because of team strategy that Lando managed to get ahead. So he has to give back that place. Where do you sit? Um, In between the two. I think... Ultimately, the McLaren team messed up. So, and Zach Brown and his team should have done a better job with handling the situation. I understand why they pitted Piastri because they're trying to protect the team, but they should have communicated that and said, yo, Lando, listen, this is our strategy. We're we're, we're trying to protect the team. So you're going to end up undercutting Piastri, but it's a team decision. So you need to restore the lead. And had they communicated that early enough, Lando would have then had enough time. And also, if I was Lando, he played it wrong. What Lando should have done was immediately give Piastri the position back. So, so say, okay, guys, when I pit, what is the delta? They'll tell him, okay, the delta was two seconds or whatever. I can't remember what the time was. Two seconds. He was like, I bet I'm giving his two seconds in the lead. Now we're racing. And then you overtake him on the track. Done and dusted. But because he waited so long, he kind of robbed him of his first win. But also... And the way that he did it, it also took away from the, like, this is Piastri's first Formula One win. So it's a big deal. But now, the, now, instead of us talking about, yo, young Piastri, first Formula One win, we're talking about Lando being a crybaby and sulking on, on the radio, which is like, it was, it's just bad. And this is the second week in a row where McLaren have had the fastest car on the track, but some of the poorest strategy execution. They remind me of the 2020 Ferrari team. It's, it's, it's like mm. that, that, that giving 2020 Ferrari. So, so, so I agree with you. If he had given the position back, he could then have, over, if he could have, he would have overtaken it. And then he gets it fair and square. Or now it's just a battle between the two McLaren drivers at the front. Um, but do you think maybe he was, he was probably like, he was torn. Like he was conflicted. Like, oh, I should hold on to it, but no, I should give it. No, I should but, hold on to it. Ah, and then like eventually. The reason why they're doing this is that they're also taking it back from, there's a time when, at, at, funny enough, at McLaren, it was Nico Rosberg and Hamilton. They were neck and neck for the title. And I think it was Abu Dhabi. Hamilton was in the lead and the team told him, you got to give Rosberg the place back. And he was like, oh, new number, who dis? <laughs> And it was like, screw it, I'm winning. <laughs> and it was even more funny because Nico Rosberg was doing commentary, uh, like um, post-race analysis. And he was like, I know this situation all too well. Ah, I couldn't stop laughing. Ah, I died. I died. <laughs> Interesting. I would love to hear just generally from the listeners, should Lando have been selfish and had a, what some people feel as a champion's mindset and just be like, screw that, I'm going for the win which obviously would have caused problems in the team, or should he be a team player? Which is the and, problem. So you know. the, the, the problem being, and Max is displaying it now, is Formula One, granted Red Bull had three years of just absolute dominance, but because now everyone else has had a chance to catch up, they don't have the fastest mm. car on the track anymore. Now, 
because they don't have the fastest track, Max is, is now struggling to get points. And Max is in the cockpit. So he understands that, yo, guys, these guys are way faster than us. If it continues at this pace, we're not going to win the Constructors and I might not win the Drivers' Championship. So, so things have to change. And that's kind of why he had that little meltdown when he, try, when he tried to take out Hamilton. So I get that. But also, if the team aren't bought in, the team aren't going to do the extra work for you. The team aren't going to stay the extra, stay up the extra hour. You know what I mean? And Lando needs the team. He's, he's where he's at right now because of the team. So you might win this championship, but then what happens for the next championship or the next season? What happens after that? Because mm-hmm. what happens if Piastri starts outperforming you and they realize, you know what, actually you are number one, but Piastri might actually be a competent mm-hmm. number one and it's easier to also, work also, with. Also considering Lando is still young, he's still got such a huge career ahead of him. I don't... I, I disagree with the thinking that you must have a champion's mind. Like, nah, nah, you got, you gotta, you gotta think of your career as a whole. Um, and if you are already creating enemies and already, of course, being a champion, you'll always have enemies, of course. But I mean, if you're already creating unnecessary enemies and you're already starting fights and messing up the, because McLaren could decide, you know what? Lando Norris is an amazing driver, but we lost out on, Position two in the constructors' championship because of him. Mm-hmm. So you know what? He's not worth the trouble. We're not renewing, and every everyone else is like, you know what? We don't want to bring such a person into our into ah, our stable anyway. I think and that, now, that that's, next thing you know, a bit of you're a driving for Williams. Hey, then, uh, I know, I know, it's a stretch. Land, Land, it's a bit of a stretch. Lando but. is the, Land, the, the. There are a few drivers that are worth the headache. Obviously, Max. Obviously, Charles. Lewis is on the brink, on the cusp. George. Signs, kinda, and then after that, after that, yeah, you struggle to find any other drivers with the headache because there's just so much parity. Daniel Ricciardo has been reduced an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? I think he would do better than Perez though in the in the Red Bull. No, he didn't. Dan, he was in the Red Bull and he did worse than Perez. What are you talking about? Yeah, he did at that time, but before that, he did better. The, 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 red, the, re, the reason Daniel Daniel was winning in the Red Bull and then Max came and then he saw that nah, now I have to fight second fiddle to Max screw it I'm going yeah, because, that's where he had because Red Bull has the fastest car it's easy to win when you have the fastest car it wasn't winning that much I yes think, that's what I, I think, so I think what Daniel has so, like four race wins how many race wins does Daniel Ricciardo have how many does Perez have Ricciardo has four as well but also, but Ricard, but Perez won with uh, Force India. Oh, Ricardo has eight. Ricardo has eight wins. Perez, let's see here. Negative wins. No, let me see. So he's got negative wins because of all the DNF. He's got six and thirty nine podiums. So. I'm just saying, anyway, it, it, it'll probably not be that different, to be honest. But continuing on what? Um, let's talk. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the, the two main things I want to talk about. I don't know if you want to talk about like um, uh, this whole NBA situation. And if you wanted to talk about. Uh, what NBA uh, situation? Uh, uh, I saw you guys were talking. I, you know, oh, whenever you guys oh, talk about, about the TV rights. It's an nerdy thing, but it falls in line with what we were discussing about, like TV and streaming. Essentially, the NBA is deciding to go with Amazon Prime because they're paying more than TNT. TNT were low-balling, and maybe they thought they had more leverage than they did because TNT does have the best post-game basketball show ever with uh, Inside the NBA. Inside the NBA is now going to have its last season. Which me and Charles Barkley already announced that he's retiring after this because if they don't get it, then he's done. So it's an end there. So there's no more Charles Barkley, no more Shaq, no more Kenny. Um, so sad, but it is what it yeah. is. My my eyes are glazing over just listening to this. But anyway, so okay, I want to talk about two things, two major things I want to talk about. And then there's a couple of other other little stories. So the first thing is a, is Mr. Beast. Mm-hmm. Um, because we kind of talked about him a little bit last week, right? I figured, let me actually get into the story. Quick refresher. Mr. Beast is the, is the biggest entertainer in the world at the moment. 
He's the biggest YouTuber with over 300 million subscribers and he's one of the most famous media personalities in the world. Even if you don't know about him, ask anyone under 18, they'll tell you immediately about him. Anyway, this week was a very tough week for Mr. Beast. Let me try and let me try and summarize the story. So part of Mr. Be- must part of Mr. Beast's Ma- team Master Beast? includes someone by the <laughs> includes someone by the name of Ava Chris uh, Tyson. Ava Chris Tyson is uh, has been part of a lot of conversations because she's a transgender woman, and uh, in the past, Mr. Beast has had to actually make statements about you know how he's tired of all the the bigotry and whatever, whatever, and you know stop coming after my friend Ava, um, leave her alone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But anyway. So what happened this week is, it actually didn't happen this week. Almost a month ago, some other YouTuber, a small YouTuber, posted up a video which was discussing uh, allegations of grooming because uh, the story was, the story as it was told, I didn't watch this YouTube video. It was just summarized for me, courtesy of Philip DeFranco. Shout out to that dude. Um, And he basically summarized it this way. Mr. Beast was in uh, a Discord server with a bunch of underage people who were also in that server and they used to exchange a lot of, air quotes, edgy jokes. As you can imagine, teenagers, and at the time, Ava was, did I say Mr. Beast? Sorry, Ava was 20 years old and um, this kid was, I think, 12 or 13 or something and, and they used to send each other messages. In this group chat in Discord, That included very edgy kind of, you imagine teenager jokes about what you do to each other and blah, 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 blah. That kind of stuff, right? Obviously very nasty. So weirdly enough, this YouTube video barely got any notice, but then all of a sudden, like the YouTube community started talking about it this past week. And it now became a whole conversation like, oh my gosh, how can this be happening? And then other people are now going on Twitter. Someone who used to work for Mr. Beast came out and said, no, Jimmy knew about Jimmy as Mr. Beast's name. Mr. Beast knew about this uh, all along. La, 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 la. So now it's a huge thing where every single streamer and YouTuber and commentator is talking about um, either Mr. Beast is canceled or you should cancel Mr. Beast or Ava, Chris Tyson, Wacho is a, is a pedophile, et cetera, et cetera. Or the flip side, which is somewhat defending them. And, you know, obviously it started this whole culture war and discussion and blah, blah, blah. And as you can imagine, the fact that there's a trans woman involved has just led it a whole other direction. So that's ultimately the story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think we have to go into details as to exactly what was said by who and what. Um, just a couple of other maybe relevant points to this. Um, this kid who, this happened, by the way, this happened years ago. This person is now 20 or something, I don't know. And they came out and they said, listen, I was not groomed. I was in a chat room with a bunch of other people and we said nasty jokes in there. And yeah, that's what happened. I was not being groomed. But then other people say, yeah, you wouldn't have known that because you were 13. So you can't really say whether you were or you weren't. So there's that debate that's going on, right? Um, uh, um, Ava Chris Wacho has come out and put out a statement saying, my bad, sorry about what happened all those years ago, but you guys are twisting it into something that it wasn't. I've stepped away from the Mr. Beast team so that I don't malign him. Then Mr. Beast also put out a statement like, I'm, a bit dis- I'm disgusted to hear about these stories. I've hired an investigative team to, to try and determine exactly what is that happened. But in the meantime, Ava Chris is no longer part of my team. Okay, that's the situation on the ground. So as, as I, I didn't pay too much attention to it, but I paid a little bit of side attention to it as I watched it unfold. And because it came up in our Patreon group, I thought we'd talk about it today. I think there's two things that I want to mention. First of all, Obviously, without even, without even going further, this whole situation of being in a Discord server with kids in it is inappropriate. Mm-hmm. There's, no, there's no excuse for that. It's inappropriate. It's wrong. If I found that I was in a WhatsApp group chat, Phil, and I knew that in that group chat were 12 and 13-year-olds, obviously, I would not be making sexual jokes, I let alone not, dude, directing what, them what? towards... I wouldn't be in there. I'd be like, deuces... What, what, what do I... Yeah, what do I have you wouldn't even be in there. What, what do we have to talk about? I mean, I mean, let's assume, like, I, 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 I want to allow for possibility. Let's say this is a gaming group. I it's, don't it's care. Yeah, I, it's fine. It's, you may not care, but I know some people would be in a Discord server where everyone is playing the same game. So you guys are arranging how you're going to enter the gulag or whatever it is you call it, right? So let's assume 
that you find yourself in a Discord group server or a group chat for whatever reason, or maybe it's um, the neighborhood group or something. Everyone who lives in this neighborhood and the mom is has put in that. I don't know, whatever the reason is, you're in a group chat. You see how you're struggling to find examples of why you'd be in a group yeah, of kids. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. To, to me, when I heard that it was Discord, I just assumed it was gaming, right? But anyway, you're in this group chat. Obviously, it's weird to have any kind of edgy jokes. And it's definitely wrong or inappropriate to send directly to a kid any of those kind of chats, right? Mm -hmm. That's a given. That's a given. But the second thing is, I think it's also clear that a lot of people are doing, and we've spoken about this before, a lot of people are using this as some kind of virtue signaling. As in, I am rushing to my channel to quickly explain how bad and how wrong it is that this person is in this. Yes, it's wrong that you're in the group chat. You shouldn't be in the group chat. But what's the purpose? What is the purpose of you going out and making a 20 minute video exclaiming how wrong it is? Everyone has said it was wrong. What's what's the purpose? What what are you what are you are you trying to show just how much no, of a Dan, people 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 were unsure. There was a lot of uh, like like people don't know where to where to fall on this on this topic. So they had to lend their voice to make sure that, you know, they could sway public mm. opinion. Secondly, secondly, I need to be careful to make it not sound like any kind of defense. It's about a defendant. What? No, if, if you had, okay. Okay, I, there's no clear answer to this, but just out of curiosity, Phil, if you had an employee mm -hmm. and you find out that Eight years ago, or seven years ago, your employee made inappropriate jokes in a group chat. Mm -hmm. What's what's the logical sort of, or what steps would you take? Uh, I'd have to refer to the HR guide. Well, a, a what's legal and what's in our HR policy? So, when laws violated, if, if it's I don't know. Like, we need a legal expert to actually come in and tell us. Like, legally, is this illegal or that? Like, or is this is morally um, dubious? That's one thing. So, from what we've thing, heard, from what we've heard, he sent edgy jokes to a kid, not nudes, not whatever. Like edgy jokes. Yeah. So, so if, if that quotes, is, and that's inappropriate, completely messed up. So, so it's not illegal though. So, if that's the case, then now, now, now let's be pragmatic and honest. What, what's my position? Am I a lawyer? Well, you know what I mean? Like, am I a short? Do I run a short? A your store? company, your, your no, no, company no. right now, Phil, your company. It depends. It depends on, on what position, what position they do. Like, and also, if, if you're being frank, how much money they cost me? Is this costing me money? So, with, with Mr. Beast, the, the moment the story broke and the reason why, the reason why every story leads with Mr. Beast employee, Mr. Beast collaborator yes. is because they're leveraging yeah, yeah. on Mr. Beast's name. Every time that happens, Mr. Beast is losing millions. So Mr. Yeah. Beast has no choice but to be like, my guy, uh, listen, well, whatever happened, you're costing me money, which is now affecting the ability of my company, which is obviously affecting my ability to pay you and, and other coworkers. So, sorry, dog. You gotta go. We didn't speak about it on this podcast, but a couple of weeks ago, another popular streamer by the name of Dr. Disrespect. I was about to bring that up. Also, yeah. Ah, but yeah. the, the Dr. Disrespect also, one was wild. That story was actually wild. So that, that was wild, right? So the Dr. Disrespect one was, he was actually basically hitting on a minor. And it wasn't the In first one, time, I, and he had been caught cheating on his wife multiple times before. And he, and he actually, in his apologies, like, I did I send inappropriate messages to a minor? Yes. I was like, okay, this, this statement is already... It's done. Like, it's done. There's no, there's no but. Just, there's just no, there, shut there, up. Just, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> shut but, up. But, you don't but, even have to say anything else. But somehow so in this situation... So in this, in this um, Ava, Chris Tyson situation, right? I don't want to... What I'm trying to say is what that person did was wrong and inappropriate. Okay? It's not an excuse. It's not... There's nothing to defend them. However, this thing happened six, seven, eight years ago. I don't know what, however many years ago, right? The, the person, there's no, um, there's no crime that was committed. So far. Right? What? Yeah. I mean, 
as far as we What Phil know. says in terms of you're costing me money, that's very straightforward. The fact that everyone is talking about it, you're costing me money, you have to get out of here. But the flip side I want to say is, why is everyone talking about it? Because my understand or how I would approach it, if I saw it, I'd be like, yo, this story has now come out, you did this. If that person comes out and says, yeah, man, I was wild and back then, I made some silly decisions, I sent inappropriate messages. Hey, that happened, first of all, that happened when you were not working for me. If you were working for me at the time, maybe that might be a different conversation. And I don't know what the situation necessarily is with Mr. Beast. I haven't looked that deep into it. But let's assume this happened before you were working with me. All of this happened back then. My decision might now be made on are you costing me money or not? If it's on a moral basis, it's like, listen, eight years ago, you sent weird messages in a group chat to a minor. That's messed up. Why would you do that? I don't know. I thought I was being funny. I was like, hey, man, I regret that. I'm sorry I did that. To me, that's like, yeah, that was stupid. That was dumb. You shouldn't have done that. We move on. I, like, what, what, should ha- what do you want to happen? Everyone who's like outraged about this, what do you want to happen? If he is, like, don't get me wrong. If he is currently soliciting or engaging minors or he's doing some weird stuff, oh, it's not a he, it's a she. Sorry, my bad. If she is currently engaging minors and doing all of that at present, then absolutely bury her under the jail. But if you're telling me this happened, all the, what must happen? Must, must she be arrested? Must she be publicly flogged? Must she be fired from every job? Well, like, what, what would you like to happen for this inappropriate thing that this, or this wrong thing that this person did eight years ago? That's what I want to know. Everyone who's outraged. What is the correct response? Some people will say it's obvious that this person's a pedo. If they did this eight years ago, they're still doing it now. If that's the case, then yeah, they must, be, they must face some kind of legal repercussions. But you don't know that. We don't have any evidence towards that. If new information comes out, then maybe, yeah, absolutely. But I don't understand what, what, what people are outraged. I would have expected, yeah, that was messed up. Why would you do that? That was then, messed up. Then we know why. Yeah. Let's, be, let's be honest. Okay, l- let's be honest and pragmatic. And I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not simplifying um, a complex issue. I'm hoping no children were hurt, like legitimately hurt. I'm hoping no child abuse occurred. I'm, I'm, I, I hope and pray that that is indeed the case. If we're taking yeah, this and, at face and, and, value. And it's, while, while you're on that, field, it's probably important to say that we're at a stage where obviously we don't have information. This is, this is an entertainment story that has included this sort of like messed up part of it, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. So, so but go on. If, if we're on that and then obviously we, we can't ignore where popular culture is going now, what the popular sentiment is, pizza gate, blah, 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 blah. You know, children being abused by successful Hollywood elites, ETC, ETC, ETC. Yep. The, the, obviously the anti, uh, the anti-woke mob going against someone like that. That definitely, I think, plays a part to it. But I think, I think, in conjunction with all those other mitigating factors, the biggest thing is Mr. Beast, as we discussed last week, is at the top. And when you're at the top, people yeah. are going to start shooting. And despite that, how many people have made money off this piece of mark? Like, it's it's inappropriate, but to a certain degree, it's makua. Right? How many people have made money off this piece of makua? Like, right now, we're discussing it. So, we're, we're technically making money off this piece of my goal. <laughs> well. That, you know what I mean? And that, that's, that, that is a byproduct of what it is. However, I think it's also a, a good learning lesson for Mr. Beast is like, okay, sometimes you have to make a decision, right? So hopefully there's full disclosure. Hopefully, maybe not. I don't know. But if... if I mean, all of this is, has happened in like the past, the past few days. No, but, so but when, I think a lot of people when, expect... When hired immediate. or maybe during the course of the employment... Maybe like as Ava developed as an individual and a person and realized, you know what? Yo, I was wiling back then. Yo, um, boss, just a heads up. You know, your profile is really big. I'm really closely aligned to you. I did something stupid back in the day. This is what I did. Not illegal, but I'm confiding in you because I'm trying to protect you. Bet. You know what? Good looking out. Don't do that stupid thing again. But let's get a PR team put a plan in place. Let's get ahead of the story before it even drops. Then before it's even a major thing, listen, guys, we've done A, B, C, D, E. We're investigating or we're conducting investigation. We're, we're coming out because we take this seriously. 
If anyone has any incredible information, please come forward, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? A similar example of this, I don't know if you followed the issue with um, Linus a few a few months back. Uh, tech tips. Yeah, 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 Linus Tech Tips with the former employee that claimed that she had been sexually harassed and there's a lot of inappropriate jokes in the workplace, um, ETC, yeah. ETC. Granted, even it's hard to, because ultimately Linus hired an independent contractor, as he said, and they found no fault. But also, if you hire someone, they technically work for you. So you're hiring someone to tell you where you messed up. It's it's a weird dynamic. But even within that, even with trying to act accountably, quote unquote, I still think Linus made a few missteps here and there. And most notably is the way the fans have been going after this girl. Like... They've been they've been doxing her hard for months, and it's sad, which I don't understand nor get. But it is what it is. So I I would say that would have been the best approach. People make mistakes, people do stupid things. But if you now realize you're in a position where it's going to compromise not only your 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 job but your boss's job and their reputation, you have to give them the heads up and be like, "Yo, I did something stupid," and then let them make the decision on how to proceed. Don't make them make them the decision under duress because. If it's under duress, you're going to lose. Yeah, but realistically, Phil, no one's going to do that. No one's going to come forward and say, listen, this might not be a thing, but you should you'll know be, about this bad you'd, thing. You'd I be surprised. You'd be surprised. It, it does, that, it, that actually does happen. That actually does happen. I also don't think it's, I wouldn't recommend that without any smoke, just come forward and say, listen, eight years ago, I did this thing. You should know about it. No one's going to ever do that. Okay. If things start popping up and you start seeing people are talking about it, then you probably should, right? The, the other thing is, I think you can expect, you can probably expect, especially if, if your job is in a very publicly, like, listen, you're, you work for the biggest YouTuber in the world. The least you can expect, even for inappropriate behavior, is to lose your job. It is what it is, lose your job. But I mean, I feel like people, I don't know, they're like baying for, she must be lynched in the streets or something. I don't, I don't know what must happen. Mm. Anyway, that was the one thing I want to talk about. Then the other thing I want to talk about is um, last week, um, after we recorded, the biggest tech um, outage of all time happened. Thank God it, it didn't affect us. Yeah. May, you know what? Maybe liquid <laughs> run on CrowdStrike. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe that's what's happening. So all around the world, uh, Windows computers crashed and airlines were brought to a grounding halt. Banks just just stopped working. Retail, even the, the Vegas sphere was blue screen of death. You know, you know it, was, it was Friday. It was, um, it was free practice day in Hungary and the Mercedes Formula One team went to the paddock and all their computers just had blue screen of deaths. Which is hilarious because CrowdStrike is a sponsor. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you know, oh, Dan, did I, did I, have I shown you my new wallpaper pair? Uh, my, my new wallpaper. Well, let's hear your new wallpaper pair. My new wallpaper. Ah, very nice. <laughs> blue screen of death. <laughs> If you're unaware what the blue screen of death is, um, of like you clearly have not worked in IT. Uh, yeah, it's just it's, you haven't owned a your, your, your Windows there's machine. There's no way. There's no way you've owned any form of Windows machine, even at home, and never encountered the blue screen of death. I, it's impossible. You, 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 you simply have not used the computer long enough. So, if you were fortunate enough to, I don't know if it's fortunate, but on Friday, if you were fortunate enough to live in a part of the world or work in some industry where you were unaffected you might not have seen just how big a deal this was. Many industries and many parts of the world, everything just did not work. The servers didn't work. The, the connections didn't work. The Azure services didn't work. All these things didn't work. And it's because um, of this CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike is a company that creates uh, security software. Um, and a lot of companies have obviously installed the security software on their, on their machines. So what had happened is CrowdStrike were doing an update and in this update, they included a driver file that was installed in the kernel of the machine, which is uh, typically what security software will do. It will go right into the kernel, which means um, below OS level. Mm. So um, this, this file caused Windows to crash. And that means your computer couldn't start. 
It not only couldn't start, it couldn't connect to the internet, it couldn't anything. So, mm. there was no way to fix it. Well, there was. You'd, have to, not, you'd have to restart it in they, safe they, they mode and out, then go through it. the BIOS and delete the, the yes. files. But yeah. So what happened? When is the last time when is when is the last time you booted <laughs> into the BIOS? I haven't had to do that in a long time and I'm glad. <laughs> Although I have a Windows machine that I'm currently using. I need to get back to to my Mac. So basically what had to happen is an as an IT technician would have to go to your computer, boot it into the BIOS mode, find this file, delete it and then your computer would start. Now imagine millions of computers all over the world went through this. So you had to fix it one by one. Eventually they did find a especially for computers that were connected because you can be connected at at a kernel level to the internet. So they were able to sort of roll back um, that update in many computers, but not all of them. Many of them had to be manually, one by one, that file had to be deleted. And that was, it was, it was insane. Like literally airports were just like collapsed. It was basically like all these flights are canceled. Meanwhile, people are just chilling at the airport. Um, yeah, it was, it was a wild time. In fact, it was a large... By number of people affected, it was the largest IT outage in history. And clearly mm. what happened is someone at this security company just happened to forget to test or forget to check or named something wrong. Or I, don't, I, I haven't actually dug deep into what the actual technical issue is, um, but I, I do know it was this one file. Um, yeah, do, and do, do, do you know like what? hospitals, these no. people had surgeries scheduled. And they're like, I sorry. Fam, can you imagine? Can you well? Uh, uh, granted, I hope no one is installing an update mid surgery. But can you imagine you've been prepped for surgery, like you sedated, and then you get into the operating room? And it's beep. Uh, oh, it was okay. Phil. It was an auto update that was pushed, so you wouldn't have. You would have just come in in the morning, and your computer updated overnight. Yeah. You're like no, 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 no. Oh, blue screen of death. That's weird. Let me try restart again. Oh, blue screen again. Let me call the IT department. And then you slowly dawns on you that the entire building is just panicking because not a sense. It's like a horror movie, bro. It's, like, it's like an M Night Shyamalan Malana movie, but instead, yeah. of, instead of trees, it's, it's blue like Res- of Resident death. Evil or something. <laughs> but you, you, and then, like on top of that, the IT department doesn't know what went wrong, right? It will take a while to figure out and trace what the problem is, and da da da, and then figure out the solution. Yeah. All it is is just. This computer is not Meanwhile, Jacob. No meanwhile, why. Jacob there in accounting is being blamed for bringing his flash stick. Because he's got one or two pirated <laughs> movies on it. It's like, yeah, that's a real problem. Yeah, that's a problem. And you know what the, the other funny thought I had is, you know, Dan, like when you're working on files and you export, it, it's, uh, it'll be like export version one. Then it'll be like export version edit. Then export version edit final. Then export version final final. Then export yeah. version edit final 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 edit final date. Then export version, real final, 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 <laughs> edit final. Day. What if, what if homie just forgot, just uploaded the wrong final version? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, also, so this is this is part of your tech ombudsman um, allocation. But this happened last week because. Billions of dollars literally worldwide were lost in this IT outage. I wonder if there's going to be lawsuits. And I wonder... It depends on what the SLA says. Going to be. It depends on the SLA. If the SLA gives them cover, then why would you so? Yeah, but the thing is, the SLA may give you, may, may cover to a certain extent, but I think even at a class action level or at um, a level of, this is, this this software or this update was pushed against my will, for example. Or there was negligence but, or something like that. Mm, I'll be very key. I'll be very curious to see what's going to happen. I don't, I anyway, don't, I don't think that so uh, yeah, that, then this, that was the huge IT outage that happened last week. This is not the, the first time we've heard of an, an, a, a software update breaking something. Granted, this is the, the largest scale. But if that was indeed the case, then multiple software updates would have been entitled to lawsuits. How many times have we updated uh, Adobe and then like Photoshop just crashes repeatedly? Yeah, but I mean, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Like an update didn't work. The software stops, whatever. Your update, blue screen of death to my computer. Aye, 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 aye. And not just mine, but the whole, everyone. <laughs> hey, I saw people, I saw, I saw people I know who were like, literally like, yeah, so we were just told to go home. 
because nothing's working. Nice. So I'm off to brunch. Why, why, why would you sue? Like they've done you a favor. Shout out to them. Everything and everything in my office is working just fine. <laughs> All right. Anyway, those are the two major things that I wanted to speak about. Um, but of course, uh, there are some other gagaga situations we could uh, get into. Um, tell me, I actually don't know what this story is with the DJ Maporisa and El Tito and, <laughs> and what, 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 what's and so truly and what not, what's going on. Yeah, to watch the video. You know, w- watching that, I was like, yo, I can see the influence of Star and Buckwild, who influenced Joe Budden, who's now influenced El Tito. El Tito delivered that soliloquy, like, and, and, and I guess it was to a certain degree, Funk Flex, like, there's that very New York radio personality type soliloquy, where he's like, I'm going at you and I'm just going to take your part. Um, I have been seeing parts of El Tito's podcast. To be to be honest, I haven't watched many episodes. I'm I'm a big big fan of El Tito. Shout out to him because he used to show love back in my blogging days. So you know, not, not nothing but love for him and and the, and the Glitz Gang, especially him and Sean Page, is good people. Um, so in essence, he did a video because DJ Maporisa had uh, has been feeling as of late that a lot of the guests that in, I invited to El Tito's podcast have a lot of things to say about DJ Maporisa and he didn't appreciate that. Um, so, Central, uh, Shape Your Shit, um, who else, who else said something on El Tito's podcast? I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting the third party. Um, and, but, El Tito also did his best to be like, yo, okay, you guys are saying this, but yo, let's let's be fair. Let's not say anything, you know, defamatory about someone. So, like, even as people were going at Maporisa for being, for under the auspices of being shady or not being fair with split sheets, like, El Tito did his best to be fair. Sometimes I think even a little too fair to, to Maporisa because obviously there's an industry relationship there. After... So, so, so El Tito... It was El Tito's podcast, and you said there was a bunch of guys on his. Not podcast. at the same time. This is an and ongoing thing. Like, oh, over time, over time, okay. there have been guests who have all had a number of guests who the common theme has been, Maporisa does dodgy business. Essentially, they, they've run it down to yeah. Maporisa does dodgy business, and then Maporisa finally caught wind of this, was unhappy, and then cursed out um, El Tito, and in the same tweet, cursed out El Tito's mother. El Tito was like, uh, that'd be tough, bro. Firstly, um, I've never said anything bad about you. The guests have. And also, what are you bringing my mother into this? Like, are you out of your mind? Like, have you lost respect for elders? So firstly, there are people who are pissed off at you for talking sideways about my mom. So we're going to come back to that later. But also, my guy, you've been doing dodgy business for a while. Then he just started listing all the artists. It's like, what's going on with Shasha? What's going on with Sertro? What's going on with Mahu? Like, there are people who constantly have complained about you taking money from them, taking credit from them, um, being dodgy with the split sheets. And you, you you claim to be this person, but you're just a culture vulture because you did this with Afrobeats, you did this with hip hop, you did this with Gom. Now you're doing this with, with Amar Piano. Um, it was a pretty poignant takedown of um, my police. And the, the, the best part about it is like, yo, listen, I'm not even going to call you my police. I'm going to call you by your government name. And then remember, because we laughed about it. What is my police's government name? Timba, Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy. So it's like Sunny. Every time he goes, Sunny Boy. <laughs> and the people that don't know are like, Yo, why is he being so rude? They're like, nah, he's calling him by his name. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <okay>. like, <"Yo." laughs> so, yep. Um, essentially, El Tito um, addressed that. Then he was like, yo, Mac G, also, I see you sneak dissing, but every time I run up up, up, up to, or run into you and Soul, it's all love. So what, what's going on here? Like, if we have a beef, we have a beef. If we don't, we have a don't, but I don't do this snake stuff. You know what I mean? And he basically chopped, chopped him down to size, which I found entertaining as well. But Maparisa, after realizing the error of his ways, went to Twitter to apologize and said, you know, man, I'm sorry about calling your mom's out her name. And it's all love over here, which I found interesting. But yeah, it's been um, an interesting uh, uh, a week on, the, on 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 
on the on the on the, the YouTube's, which is weird because I don't I don't even have social media anymore. But some somehow still I still see these things. So so is, is Maporisa actually shady, in your opinion, too? Um, what? Network? What? <laughs> Hello. This is the problem, Phil. You've been compromised. Hello? Hello? Why can't you speak on this? Hello? Hello? <laughs> huh? What? No? What? Oh, can't uh, hear you. Yeah, I can't yeah, hear you, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah, Dan, yeah. Dan, sometimes I don't think you need, you don't need me to give analysis. You know, so sometimes things are, are there in front of us. I think let's all use our powers of deduction and common sense and draw conclusions based on the evidence in front of us. That's what I'm going to say. I think, I think that's a fair, that's a fair comment. You know, next thing you know, uh, next thing you know, it's your mother that's being spoken about on Twitter. There. And once that happens, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I actually, weird enough, I thought about that. And I was like, I don't care about the industry. At that point, if you call my mother, I'm, I'm finding you. I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even going to social media. It's, it's literally, where is he? It's, it's, not a, it's not a tweet. It's not a thing. And we kind of had this conversation. We're having... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get my thoughts on it. Because it's actually, even just the thought of imagining it has got me so upset. I'm like, yeah, if you ever say that about my moms, there'll be no tweet. There'll be no post. There'll be none of that's, the above. That's, that's, that's the thing, Phil. Why can't you just... No, 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 no. I was raised by a different time. I was raised in a, in a different culture. Nope. You say that about my moms. I'm, I'm going to find you. And I'm going to be like, say what you said to my face. So, like, that's what we're going to do. Say what you said to my face. And then we'll take it from there. What, 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 what are you, John Wickville? No, no. No, it's okay. Let it, let it slide off your back like water. Dan. On a duck. No, no. Okay, no, 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 no. no time out. Time out. Are you seriously telling me if someone made mention of your mother's private parts on Twitter to a million followers, you would be like, I'm letting that slide off my back. Your mother, the woman that carried you for nine months and raised you. Just just, just so we clear. Obviously, we are now ops. No, no, no. no. Obviously, we are now enemies and whatever limited power I have to derail your life, I will use. What I'm saying is, it would not be wise to then, I'm now going to try find you and it's on. Say what you said to my face. I'm saying that is potentially a humbling experience. No, no, no. It's now, once, God, now Dan, your mom got again, insulted. No, Dan, once and again, you I, got hands Dan, thrown. Once again, I repeat, I have no problem taking an L. I personally, me. But you'll be taking two L's no, 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 there. No, no. Me. Because if you're no, going to fight no, no, to preserve no, 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 the honor no, no, of your mother no, and you no, lose, no, no, then you no, no, fail to preserve no, no, the honor no, no. of your mother. It's not preserving the honor of my mother. It's everything you say has consequences. Right? I'm going to make your life difficult. Because even if I take that L on that day, Trust and believe when you step out, when you cross the street, you're going to look both ways because you're going to be like, yo, this guy might still be around you. The, your only solution after that is to kill me. Simply. Your only solution after that is to kill me. <laughs> no, Phil, you don't know. You see, this insult, was not, this insult was not physical. It was verbal. Use your powers of verbiage. Your only solution after calling my mama out her name in that manner is for you to ensure there's a wake for Phil Chat. That's all I'm saying. You guys need to learn not to respond emotionally. Strategize the downfall of your op. My mother. It'll be that, it, it'll, that, it'll be that much sweeter. It'll be that much sweeter. Mm-hmm. It'll be 15 years later and when you're standing over their ruined empire, you can then sit back and just be like, yeah, it was worth it. This Game of Thrones? What the hell are you talking about? This is real life. <laughs> yeah. All right. Some oh, other, oh, some other good news. Dan Valerian over week. here. This, uh, this past week, we got news that uh, Apple TV is cutting down on their budget. And uh, the reason for this is because... No one watches their shows. <laughs> and here's the messed up thing. 
Apple TV shows are amazing. But for for so, companies uh, so good me, at let advertising, let me throw some numbers at you. For for companies so good at advertising, <laughs> they, they're so bad at this. Like it's bad. It's bad. So um, Apple TV have spent twenty billion dollars producing original TV shows on Apple TV, and uh, they were like, "Yeah, no, we're not going to do that." So they then announced that they were going to reduce their spending uh, after looking at the numbers that uh, Netflix has clearly won the streaming wars to date. Um, Everything's going back on Netflix. Just Dan, like, did, did, Dan did, oh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but my brain is all over the show. Do you know what what what, what the new big hit on Netflix is? The new big hit show. Right now? Mm. What have they been advertising to me? Um, I don't know. What is, what's the new Big Hit show? Your Honor. What's Your Honor? It's the, the show with... Um, my, Judge Judy? No, man. Uh, Jeez Louise. Breaking Bad. What's his name? Why am I forgetting his name? The actor from Breaking... Your Honor. Oh, with um, uh, Brian Cranston. There we go. Brian Cranston. It's the show with Brian Cranston that originally came out. The, 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 the three seasons ran on Showtime. Then Showtime finally gave the rights to Netflix. And now because Netflix has the numbers, people are discovering a brand new show called Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen to these numbers. These numbers are ridiculous. Netflix, um, this, is, this is weekly, right? Netflix has 32.9 billion watch hours per week. Mm-hmm. No, that can't be right. No, this is this is weekly rankings. I assume it means. No, it says weekly rankings. Is this per week? Thirty two point nine billion per week. That can't be right, Phil. Mm. Wait. Wh- wh- anyway, who's your source. Uh, Bloomberg. Oh, okay. Um. Apple TV. So, do you get that? 32.9 billion watch hours on Netflix. Apple TV Plus, 310 million. Yep, sounds about right. It's it's put in a graph format and it looks so pitiful for Apple TV. Number two, by the way, is Disney Plus with 5.3 billion, which is still a fraction of that 32.9 billion. Then HBO Max with 2.5 billion, Amazon with 1.9 billion, Hulu 1.1 billion, Peacock. Even Peacock is doing better than Apple TV. Ah, guys. Ay, 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 ay. And the thing is, Apple TV has such good shows, man. I watched, um, did you watch uh, Dark Matter? Uh, no, no. I ran out of time. I only have a few. Excellent show. I only have a few hours. I, apparently the, the, um, the finale was disappointing. Well, it's, I mean, because they, instead of wrapping it up nicely, they obviously opened it up to sequels and whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So that was a little bit disappointing, but excellent, excellent show. One of my favorite shows of all time, Ted Lasso. Um, Hijack, that, that uh, Idris Elba yeah, show about the planes another, or whatever. Another one with the weak, weak, weak finale. Yeah, it, the finale was weak. you know, the finale was weak, but it was a good show. Severance, excellent show. Mm. Um, let, me, let me just see what else is here. I'm told Foundation is an amazing show. I haven't watched it. Really Atlanta. enough, like neither have I. Silo. You think you think Foundation was made for people else? I think that's that's emblematic yeah. of how bad things are. If if nerds like us aren't watching Foundation, then what hope do they have? What honestly? What hope do? <laughs> and obviously, these are expensive shows. All these like uh, super super techy, you know, nerdy sci fi type shows, and they keep making those ones. Presumed Innocent. I see everyone's talking about it. I haven't watched it, but apparently, it's a great show. So, Constellation, another one. Clearly, there's a ton of amazing shows on Apple TV. But for some reason, they're not marketing them. We don't know them. We don't know they exist. Do you know, do you know what the wild thing is? I think for a year, I, I had Apple TV. I think just over a year, I had Apple TV and I never actually paid for Apple TV. The first time I paid for Apple TV, I was like, oh, I'm canceling it. Because they, they just kept hitting me with promotions. I, I, so there was, yeah, I have Apple TV right now. Do you pay for we it? We have it right now. Do you pay for it? Yeah, no, it's um um uh, we got a new um a new device. Hey, whoa, no, 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 a new what? A new what? A new phone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's now broken, <laughs> sadly. But anyway, no, this this is not cash, Phil. This is uh, as you know, she's uh she's getting on contract in SA. Uh-huh. Easy peasy. So uh-huh. Her contract was due an upgrade. 
to get a new phone. You do know phones, phones, phones in South device. Africa are twice the price they are in Zimbabwe, which is one of the weird anomalies. But, yeah, but, but the weird thing is you don't, she's not buying it. It's, she pays for a contract and every two years she gets an upgrade. So they were like, oh yeah, you now get an upgrade. So she's literally just paying her normal monthly fee and they're like, oh yeah, do an upgrade. And they give her a new phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I was working. So it. anyway, like I, I w- the, the weird thing I would do is I would activate other people's phones. So like my, my mom would get a phone. I'm like, hey, just, um, just bring it over here, please. And I'd activate it with, with my Apple ID. I'd get my three months. Then I'd wipe it and then I'd set it up for her. <laughs> anyway, it came, it came with a year. A, a year of Apple TV. A year. I was so, getting. I was getting three and six months. You guys are big balling out here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I. I guess. I don't. Maybe. Maybe it's cumulative. Maybe I don't know. We just have a year of Apple TV, and that's how we're watching Dark Matter and some of this other stuff. But like, I don't know. Apple clearly. It, weirdly, Apple is obviously very good at marketing. That's how they become the one of the most valuable companies in the world, if not the most. I don't know what the current rankings are, but let's say top three, and. Somehow, they just haven't marketed their TV shows. They're actually really good TV shows, but everyone keeps going to watch these weird reality shows on Netflix and whatever. I think... Anyway, it's, so it's, it's I'm, also I'm quite sad to hear that they're, they're reducing budgets then. I think the golden age of streaming is over. Everything was consolidating. We already talked about the deal with Paramount. Warner Brothers is also suffering well with HBO, Warner Brothers, whatever they call themselves this week. Because now they've changed. And now they've started rebranding some of the shows with HBO because they realized, oh, wait a minute. We've got 30 years of brand equity with HBO. Maybe we should use that so people think our shows are good. Dumbasses. So there's that. Peacock is struggling. I just think it, uh, eventually Net- Netflix is just going to win them out. But I'm also worried because if Netflix becomes the only player... Uh, those subscriptions. We're going to be paying DSTV prices. No, no. Uh, just Dis- Dis- Disney Plus will obviously, it, it, they won't shut. They have it, they have so much IP they, and they, they have don't so have much enough, brand They don't have equity. It's not enough, Dan. Like, it's yeah, not but they, they're not going to, they won't. You see, how they measure it right now is in terms of watch hours, which is an unfair metric. Um, I wonder if they have um, like either revenue or they have uh, subscriptions which I'm sure Netflix is obviously still winning. But the thing is, Netflix will obviously have more watch hours because it's got more content on it. But I think people will happily pay for Disney Plus just to have access to all... Think about all the parents who are just happy to have access to all those Disney slash Pixar movies. Kids aren't even watching those anymore. Did you not read the report that the majority of kids are actually watching YouTube more than than anything else? Yeah, true. Even if people are subscribing to those things just for their own, you know, their own nostalgia. Then, then, of course, Star Wars, Marvel. Um, what else do they have? Whatever else they have. So I think, I think Disney will be, will, will be fine. Because either way, that's not their main. It's, 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 like, a, it's like a natural, it's a natural, um, it's like a natural path. Because it, Disney creates this movie. It goes out on, 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 uh, um, on the circuit. And then eventually it comes up on Disney+. Plus. So they... It makes sense for them. Even even if it's a lost leader, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? Because it's part of their entire, um, um, what do you call it? Just the entire business model. Sorry, I, I was just yeah, I was just looking it, at it. it yeah, like, yo, Netflix is destroying the competition. Yo, geez, Louise. In terms of numbers, Netflix the thing is like, has, not like ninety percent of Netflix content sucks. Whereas vice versa is true on like Apple or HBO or or probably even Disney. 90% of their content is dope stuff. Like but, Netflix has like, you have an idea? Go for it. Also, Here's a budget. Also think about, think about regions. So like right now, Dan, do you have a Disney Plus account without using a VPN? I do not. I, do not. I cannot have one. And how long has Disney Plus been? Of which? Like when did they launch? Two years ago. So in two years, you guys still haven't figured out how to get content to Zimbabwe. How many how many other third world countries have you guys failed to start servicing? It's ridiculous. Netflix is destroying these guys. And once again, I repeat, I was showing someone this this uh, the other day. I was like, the wild thing is, in the markets where there is actual competition, like America, when I turn on my VPN and I go through Netflix America with my VPN, 
the amount of content available to me is ridiculous. I get all of HBO, all of Fox, all of Warner. So why would I subscribe to the competing platforms? Plus, plus a lot of people are now doing bundling, right? So you don't even, you like when you subscribe, like when you subscribe to, not even subscribe to, when you, when you sign up for um, AT&T or something, it comes with bundled in Netflix plus, plus Spotify plus Hulu plus HBO, you know, kind of thing. Mm. So I'm sure that, I'm sure they'll eventually there'll be some mergers and there'll be some deals and agreements, but the streaming model is here to stay anyway. And Netflix will ultimately be the winner, it seems. But mm. yeah, anyway, that's the story there. Um, what else would you like to talk about, Philip? There's Zoomfest this weekend. You know, we should talk about that. Um, I know a couple of people that are going in. Uh, some patrons were asking for tickets. We don't, we don't know the Zoomfest people. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't we don't really know them like that. We're not really you know out there in London. Um, I had a friend who was the same flight as Winky D, and they were they were like having a panic attack. So and I was talking <laughs> like oh my god, I was the same as Winky D. <laughs> I was like ah, tell Banda I said what up, <laughs> and then I had to explain who Banda was. <laughs> I don't think it was happy. Hey, so, the I, other day I saw um, JP. Mm-hmm. He, he came to the station. I was like, ah, oh, what up, what up, man? How are you doing today? And then like someone else walks past and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, oh, right. Yeah, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you plebs think he's special, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That is, um, that, is, that is actually a weird thing. So, uh, you know what? Let me put him on blast because it's actually quite hilarious. So, I told you, I told you my, my cousin is here for the science fair. Mm-hmm. So also here, like crashing over because we're finishing up rehearsals. Cause oh, by the way, we're gonna be performing in Swaziland next weekend. After that, opening up for thesis in South Africa. You know what I mean? Just locking down some of these tours, you know what I'm saying? Psh, like work. So and uh we managed to get Spirit to be our musical director. So we we got, we got a lot of stuff that we're working on. Um so Jordan is also here. And my, my cousin has been telling me for a while, he's like, yo, my biggest, you know, my dream is to become a rapper and become like you, blah, 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 blah. So I've been, I've been giving him points, he's sending him books, stuff like that. And I think like now he's hanging with Jordan. He's like, no, Jordan is who he wants to be in like 10 years. So <laughs> seeing him, seeing him fan out, like that has been wild. <laughs> He said something so I can't know you. I love him too much. I won't repeat it. But he said the wildest statement, like the wildest man crush statement I've ever heard was ever said. I was like, don't ever, don't ever say that in public. Nah, nah, it's all good. It's all good, King. Don't even be, don't even be ashamed of standing out for your faith. Nah, don't let, don't let toxic masculinity. No, 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 stop Dad, you there's, from there's nothing with admiration. Yes, there's nothing with admiration. King. My, my man was like, I want to tackle this man and tell him how much I love him. <laughs> you don't have to do that, Phil. You don't have to do that, man. Huh? <laughs> you don't have to do that, Phil. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said you were not going to review. I, uh, I, oh, I'm giving you the cleanup version. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I, love, yeah. I believe children are the future, by the way. Um, all right. So, uh, I mean, there's some new music. Uh, oh, Dan, did we discuss the Emmys? Because speaking of, Netflix is destroying the competition at the Emmys this year. Oh, it's, it's uh, nominations, right? We got the nominations. Okay, 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 Look okay, at that. Okay, of all okay, the good, okay. all, all the good shows Apple is making, all they could get was 72 nominations. Netflix was like, psh, 107, light work, psh. HBO 91, psh, light work. For some reason, FX had a massive jump in Emmy nominations. What, what show came out on FX this year that would justify this? I hate to look into this. What shows came out on um, FX this year? Because FX jump is what, what 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 uh, what network is? Oh, Shogun. Uh, but 
Wait, does Shogun have 60 nominations? Because the difference between last year and this year is 60. Uh, also, that's another thing. I thought Shogun was supposed to be one season. Now they're bringing back for season two. Like, I hate America. Like, Americans just don't know when to quit. They don't know when to quit. Oh, yeah, the bear. So Shogun and the bear. Ah. American Horror Story. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Snowfall is done. So I don't know. Anyway. Um, let me see who else is nominated here. Um, uh, ton of nominations for FX. Ton of HBO's got fewer. Obviously, all the usual. I know, but uh, Apple TV's jumped up. You know, mm-hmm. it's jumped up. All right, all right, all right. Now, do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Um, did you play Spottle today, Philip? I didn't, but I see it has taken over the the Patreon group. I need a female pop artist who came out around about uh, 2006, seven. Mm-hmm. Female solo American pop artist. Female solo American pop artist. You said 2006. Ariana Grande. Okay, let's try Ariana. That actually might be a good call, actually. Mm, close. No, Ariana Grande is too recent. She's 2013. More popular than Ariana Grande. That's insane. You said, what, 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 what year range? Well, I mean, it's close to 2005, but it's, you know, after 2005. So I was saying 2006, seven, maybe eight. Amy More White. popular than Ariana Grande. Oh, she's American though. Yeah. 2013. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. That is not how you spell Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Yeah, correct. One took me two tries. Bam. Stupid Taylor Swift. Dan, anyway, also, Dan, uh, also, how are you struggling? There's only eight... Artists more popular than Ariana Grande. That wasn't struggling. I was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I don't be paying attention to these white people. <laughs> check what 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 is Taylor Swift actually? She's number one. How dare you dis- How dare you disrespect Queen Longback? <laughs> okay, 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 Philip. Um, what were we about to talk about? We we're new about to talk music. about new music. Yes, this new. Um, oh wait, did you did you hear? Uh, did you hear about... Oh, yeah, we were just discussing it. So, Tiffany Haddish is in Zoom. So, oh, joy. Do you want to go get an, do you wanna go get an autograph? I, I don't want to lie. Huh? There are some celebs, you know, even though I've never met them, I kind of feel like I've met them. I have no intention of meeting Tiffany Haddish. I have a feeling like she... Like, I, I, I just don't... Like, you know, I just... Yeah, you know, I'll be, I'm fine. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I wish you all the best. I hope she has a great time. But yeah, I'm cool. Well, I, God bless the hotels, the hotel workers where she's staying. Cause, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Tiffany Haddish. Ish, I also don't. And the thing is, when she first came out, I was kind of like, ah, oh, she seems cool. And then very quickly, it was like, yeah, no, not interested. There was some. She 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 made some weird statements. I think about Dan. She does that every month. She made weird statements about Palestine, and then she made weird statements. She's just ah, man. Just every time she's just saying weird stuff. And man. speaking of pedophilia, remember, uh, you know, remember? remember that? Yeah, yeah. And then there's that as well. And then do you remember there was some? I saw some video of her. She was talking to like some. Some some someone who had like fled a country, an African country that was at war, I think, or something like that. I can't remember the exact details. And then, yeah, and then she spoke. She like praised the guy or something who caused. I don't know. It was some weird story like that. It's just like, man, she just is seems extremely unlikable. And I don't know. I don't know her personally, but mm. just yeah. Anyway, Tiffany Addish is at Zim. For those of you who want to know, uh, at least as of a, a day or two before the recording. So mm, maybe she's in for Sadak. You never know. Guest of one. Yeah, we never. Maybe she. Maybe she's the MC. You know. 
<laughs> yeah, she posted she posted uh, on her Instagram some photos from Vic Falls. So that's why I'm saying that. Also, I wonder like, um, is, is, is Tiffany Haddish do, do you think she's smart enough to leave the location before she posts or do you think she posts ibap ibap? No, I'm sure. I'm sure maybe maybe she felt bra I'm all the way in Africa. I'm I'm safe from the ops. No, no I'm, not, I'm not talking about the ops. I'm just saying in general. Dan, this is Zimbabwe. One on Zara. They'll find her. <laughs> do you know how many? Do you know how many um, of these are already Bentons are already planning trips to Vic Falls? I mean, I don't, look, you know, I suppose it's also, you know, get what you get what you gotta get from from um, from wherever you can get it. Mm. If the ladies are not picking and choosing, you know what I'm saying. If people like. Uh, Majimombe, Wicknell, etc., etc., stay having rotations on lock, then the vice versa should also be true. Uh, I, I Get yours, King. I can't believe you just compared Tiffany Haddish to Mike Chimombe, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> back to music. There's the, the new Denim Woods EP just dropped. Oh, another one. Ah, Denim is grafting. Yo. Yo. You know what? It's called fake the funk. You know, you know what? Let let let, let, let me see. If, let me see if I if, if I if I got some pull in these streets. Let me let me give him a call. Mm. Let me give let, let me give him a call. Let, let's see if he picks up. You know. Let, let let's see if I still have pull in these streets. Why do we do this to ourselves? Is that even necessary? It's not necessary. It's fun. It's a fun game. Because we know celebs never pick up their phone calls. They'll, they'll just text and be like, Yo, what up? And I'm like, pick up the phone. Oh, he's calling me back. Here we hey. go. Oh, no. It's, it's actually working. The network is being dodgy. Thank you, Econet. Mm. And Zol. Mm, let's, as, let's assume that's what's going no, on. No, because he's calling me back, but it's not connecting. Mm, all right, sure. Yes, Phil, he is calling me back. Hello? Hello? Oh, two seconds. Ah, you're not connected to the thing. We're calling you from the podcast. Give me two seconds. We're going to ask you about the new EP. Give me two seconds. I just need to call, connect the phone to the board. I'll call you back just now. Ah, there we go. Hello? This is great, great podcasting. <laughs> What's going on? No, for some reason, it disconnected from the board. Now we are, we're running through. Oh, Jesus. Dan, like, what's going on with our network this week? It is bad. It is really bad. My network is fine. And my network is actually, it's popping off right here. I think I... I think I might have crazy. Let me just do a quick speed test. Here. Yo, Denim the Kazi. Yo, Wagwan. Wagwan, my G. What's up? How are you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I'm here with Danny, that guy. We're just recording the podcast. And we, we understand you got another EP. Nick, how many EPs do you have? How many EPs do I have? Mm. Like, how many do you have in stock? Didn't you just drop I mean, a project like, like two months ago? Now you got another one out? Um, I I didn't put out anything else. I just dropped the first one in Feb, I think. The mm. fake the fun. That's that. That's so the out. So Dan, yeah, that's, Dan that's is that's the timing uh, misconstrued, but we we also wanted to talk about that new single because we haven't caught up to you. How's that new single with, with Takura doing? The the video is ba- is a banger. We've been seeing it doing some 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 waves yeah. on radio. How how's it? How are you receiving it? You know. <laughs> Who's your inspiration, Denim? <laughs> and how are you managing being a man and an uh, artist at the same time? I mean, yeah. To be honest, talk, first of all, I'm talk, very... you're taking us seriously do, right now, being very, <laughs> Sorry, big buddy. Hey, man, don't answer our questions seriously. I mean, those are silly questions, man. Bro, damn. I mean, okay, fine. I mean, it's amazing being <laughs> a manager you. and I'm an pretty- artist. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 but, but no, no, we 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 loving the music right now, man. We loving the music. 
Uh, Wait. So okay. No. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we did we did speak about this EP before. You're right, Phil. I don't know why our why our producer decided to put it in our talking points. But yeah, we did speak about the 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 fake the funk EP. That's a, that's the one. Um, yeah. That's the one with Yamikani on it, right? We played that. We played that yeah. song. On this, yeah. this thing. No, Yamikani. Dope stuff. Uh, and then, so nice one, man. Nice no, one. it's really bad. What are you saying now? I can't. Philip, fix your phone. I don't know if it's my network or it's yours, but it's really no. It's, very it's definitely Phil's. It's Phil's. It's Phil's network. <laughs> Phil, I think you need to move close to your neighborhood or something. My guy, I have the router in my office. My, I have oh so my many gosh. bars. I think I'm cooking my brain with the microwaves. It's not my fault. Oh my that, that liquid is trash. I think it's time you at least call Elon to actually come in and store a, yeah. a functional. <sighs> the, problem is, <laughs> the problem is now with Elon, you might have to go through a week now. Which is the story for another day. Anyway, <laughs> let, let's talk about this music, bro. I think... <laughs> We're gonna have a we're gonna have a full chat one day, like sometime soon, because you've been you've been on a great run. Uh, you've been on a run. I think one of the last the the last the last few chats we had um, earlier, and you were talking about how mm-hmm. you felt like maybe the music was really connecting. But I think, especially since since Fila, um, it's taken a turn. Even the stuff you guys are doing with OCD. Um, that was, yeah. I think, you, you really, you really found a lane that, that you, and you've been able to tap into it. How has it been on your side as an artist, um, with with the new stuff you're dropping and how it's being received by the market? Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm always open to like seeing or like just the people just gravitate to the music that I they're not used to, so. I don't like being predictable in terms of like my releases. That so I guess I came out with the EP with a that was just that full rap song, and then I don't know as Sakura, it was you know previewed months before. It was pretty much just like an oh okay this is like a this is like a left those that actually did just recently found out find out about me. It's just not like okay this dude can actually do other stuff which. I always love to keep people on their toes. Like, you should, you're trying to like, drop next. Who knows? I might even come to some of my piano. You know, my piano, but that's just a realm I love to exist in. Mm, I know an Italian guy I can link you up with who can make some fire. I'm a piano <laughs> instrumentalist. <for> in, <laughs> that is always a tune, bro. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and, uh, I mean, just and, to even and, have and, that record. Nice, nice video. It, I'm a pleasure, 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 pleasure. You know, visuals. That's, that's I feel like that's my favorite part about this whole, like this whole creating music. Because pretty much just painting a picture of what you would have created. So <laughs> that's 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 that's. I'm I'm glad people actually mess with it. Yeah. Yeah, dope. No, it's dope. Uh, anyway, like like Phil said, yeah, we do have to have like a like a full interview. But we we were literally just so. Full disclosure, right? We were going through our our discussions of like, oh snap, there's new denim music, and then Phil called you, and then now we're checking like, oh no, there's it's not new denim music. It's just people talking. Yeah, about because it. I was yeah. even surprised. I'm like, how come this hasn't popped up on my on my on my feed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. I was like, no, no, I actually haven't yeah, even but, dropped but, it. But it's... it's been my last release was next, so, so mm. I think unless somebody yeah. dropped the feature that I'm not aware of. <laughs> which is what, which hey. what's happening <laughs> Mr. Kazi sir thank you very much for coming onto the podcast we'll have you for a full episode yes, yes. sometime in the near future of course definitely alright bless my G I'll catch up with you later nice, I'll wait, okay. nice. Um, but what do you got what do you got new music wise Philip what uh, do you got the, what do you got there's a span then why do you always defer to me when you don't have any new music <laughs> <laughs> I played I'm the new not vault. defer. I'm asking. Am I? I'm asking you, Philip. What new music are you got? I, I'm not gonna lie. That, I've got that, something. That, right. I got. That I got new an last album is insane. I, I've been banging that. I love it. Oh, you mean Blixed? 
blixt mm. Mm. i love it 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 i've been playing that so i'm i'll i'll play i'll play for you the new silent no featuring featuring kyla black I, mm. how many so mates must i break up with before i find the one Did a good one. This is Silent No featuring Kyla Black. It's dropping tomorrow. So by the time this episode comes out, it should have dropped. Mm. It's called Good One. Uh, I, I, I. Silent the guitar, the guitar man. Experimenting yeah. with vocals. I mean, he's done a couple. Do you know, of songs. I've got a fun. I've, I've got a fun discussion. I mean, you know, like so. I think it was Sunday. I think it was Sunday or Monday. I had to do a, a marathon work session. So I was doing a bunch of stuff. Also, we had to order some books. Then, as I'm sure you remember. So I was, I was working yeah, pretty by much. The way, till, yeah, I, was, I was working. I found uh, nothing. Mm, I was I was working till like four a.m. and um. One of the songs that, that came up and I just kept repeating it was was Marianne by Nyasha David. So much so I even I even like I called him that morning and I was like, yo, my guy. You good? Just checking in on you. Just like, yo, Marianne, probably one of the best songs ever. And it was you know, no, don't don't good looking up because you know it's, it's always good to give people their flowers when they can. Mm-hmm. And I want let's have a like a fun debate here and maybe in the comments and especially amongst the patrons. I want to know the top five Zim R and B songs. Top five Zim R and B songs. Yeah. Sure. Mm, um, no, this requires a bit of thought. Mm. Top five Zim R and B songs. I would. I would. Um, I don't know if it qualifies, but there's a couple of. of Takura songs that would have to be in there. Um, but I'm talking all time, right? We've got a, like all time classics. Yeah, the, the thing is now, you see, if we're going to say all time, then then we got to go back to the days of, of um, the days of urban grooves, things that yeah. would also qualify as R&B. Once again, urban grooves. I feel like Right. Oh, well, I, think about, I was thinking because to me, to me, the top two. Right now, my top two it's Marianne and Deepa Rudo by Sani Magalima. Those are my top two. I think of all time is Zim R and B. Yeah, those are my favorite. Then, obviously, Mazi Rudo. Yeah, Mazi Rudo's up there. Uh, of all time, Philip. I mean, I, I love Marianne, but all time. Okay, give me give, give me what's beating it. Let's go. Just give me then this. No, no, let's not lie to each other. Let's not lie to each other. Dude, this is a jam. Nah, 
And I won't allow you to disrespect the song. This this this, this isn't the, this is a top song. There's no kid. Don't get me wrong. I really like that song. That is a great song. Okay. But of all time, to- dude. I, I, Dan, and once again, I'm not talking about the biggest hit. I'm not talking about the most I, I impact. Know. I'm I, talking I, I, about yeah. listening to this song. You're like, this song is an. This is this song is insane. Like it, uh, a song that makes you stop everything and like, okay, this is about 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 my big dad. Philip, do you know of all time? <laughs> do you know? Hmm. <laughs> okay. So earlier I said so, like so, something Takura has to fit in there. Ga. Hold on, let me open Spotify. Spotify is over here. Dan, you, um, you're arguing blind. That's the other thing. Dan, how can you argue against when you don't even have a contender? You don't have a fight in the ring. Okay, okay. Let me, okay. I Don't get me wrong. I really like that Nyasha David song. Top, top song. But I, 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 I can, I've already got one Takura song that I already think, uh, an R&B song that I already think beats it. So let me play it now. This one, yeah. I mean, yeah, still, to but me, it's to okay. Me, not Let me, me, to me, it's still not okay. Me. It's okay. Let's, let's, to me, this wouldn't even fall. It would also not fall into all, of all time. I need some time to think about some of the, the, the top of all time. Actually, this might fit in of all time in Zim songs, but let me, let me, let me, let me think. Let's prepare for next week, Phil. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll think over the week and I'll, I'll find mm-hmm. them for next week. Okay. All those, all those so you, you're coming songs with, you're back coming in the day, with. Anna. Then, this, this. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Here it comes then. This is where you know this is a banger. It's right, it's right. believe you disrespecting this man this, and you this this you used to this man used to be your co-worker you are you, you are a snake you are a snake in corporate that's what Sunny Makalima snake. is my corporate boy. snake that's that's a top song but that's not even Sunny Makalima's best song anyway I was about to play this song for you and then tell me of all time of all time Philip guys do you know of all time hmm. all right in Zwa, in Zwa e and tell me Guti, if this, if this is the disrespect that is happening right now
Trying to be offensive, he's not. He kind of goes out of key a couple times. Ha! Ah, hey! Oh no, hiri! All right, this is Sunny Makalima's best ever song. <laughs> Oh, the Zimbabwe is a, uh, Zimbabwe is a cook. Ah, no. You know, now that I actually, I have something to think about it. This man made bangers like this. And had to close the ATM every day. <laughs> and reports. <laughs> ah, you are guys. Now, now you say, ah, no, guys. Ah, no. Like, ah, no, guys. Ah, no, but then. Is it fair? Is it fair? Sadaro. Sadaro. My man just took Use quarterly reports after making this. Ah, F. Ah, nah, fam, nah. I'm even saying I burn this all to the ground. I'm like, I know, you're not paying. You're not paying. I made these items. You, you want me to wear a suit and tie? Nah, you, nah, nah. Ah, Jack. <laughs> I have to apply for leave. You guys tell me I have to apply for leave. Dude, every time I'd walk into that office, I just hit play. Like, you hear this shit? Bah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no. Ah, no. Zimbabwe is such a horrible country. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this oh, is not oh, a... Oh, it's, uh, no, we can joke about it now, but it's... Dude, it's wild. Cynic. Cynic dropped Sin City. <laughs> and we all boomed. Oh, this is the best Zim hip hop album ever. But you know what that dude had to do Monday morning, 8 a.m. <laughs> Report for duty at Alias France. <laughs> that dude, that dude had to go and apply for a visa <laughs> and get out of here. I know this country, this country will strip you of your dignity, bruh. Like you'll be questioning your decisions. Dan, Dan you're, you're here, you're here, nice story. Young. you're here, humbling story. Let me tell, let me tell people humbling story. So, I was hitting up, I was hitting up like one of my mentors. Just on a tip, like, yo, I'm doubling down on this music. So this, this is my plan for this, my strategy, this is what I'm doing. They were like, yo, dope. You know what? There's a position. Do you want the item? I was like, yeah, but you know, the whole work permit, guan, G, 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 G. She was like, nah, nah. Got you. Don't worry. Even hit me with the follow up. Yo, have you sent this item in? Because interviews are happening soon. I was like, no. I'd been preparing, but you know what? Actually, let me do it right now. Put my dead side, sort out my guans. You know those those auto responders that you get? <laughs> also, because I was, I was kind of thrown off because I was like, okay, like, is it a hit hunting or is it just like a through pass? I don't know. You know those auto responders that, that, that hit you? Like, the moment the software has gone through your CV, it's like, nope. Doesn't live in Joburg, doesn't have a visa. Because they ask you on the thing, like, do you do you need a visa sponsorship? Yeah. Within four hours of me submitting the item, it was like, yo, my guy. Thanks, but no thanks. See you later. Do you know how humbling that is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see. yeah, speaking of which, I'm in the process right now of applying to let me not let me not let me not jinx anything, but I'm trying to get that Schengen Adam, but hey. Mm. And it's it's not even for like Mafaro, it's for graft, bruh. <laughs> anyway, we move. The green uh, oh, we I move. forgot to tell you the story. Dude, the green Brahma strikes again. So I had to get a Nigerian visa. So process online states, pay this. Um they'll give you a receipt, pitch up at the consulate with the receipt, get your visa. Oh. Do that. Go to the consulate in town. After negotiating traffic, these road closures, you know the extreme spot because the Nigerian consulate is on Samora Michelle. If you've ever been on Samora Michelle midday, 
Like just on a normal day, you already know it's 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 crazy frog. Now you gotta add that plus road closures. It's madness. Plus Cedric. So I deal with all that, get to the the Nigerian item, they're like, ah, oh my guy, uh, actually, my dad's up. Uh you should have just come with the cash. Here. Yeah. So like, okay, what about this Olympia? But I'm like, nah, it's fine. We'll think we'll, we'll issue a, a refund notice. You'll get the money back sometime. <laughs> but uh go deposit this 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 check and then we'll we'll sort you out. Bobo. So now I'm like, okay. Gotta do that. Then you've gotta deal with the biometrics, then you've got to deal with another application form, then you've got to, oh, then, oh, the first thing is, there's a form they give you online to download and fill out. Fill out that form, go go to hand it, and they're like, no, 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 we don't accept this form. We only accept this form, but we only have one copy. So you've got to go take it across the road, get a photocopy, then come back with it, fill it out in pen. They give you the original. Dude, this, this copy looks like it was printed when Nigeria was first formed. Like it's all the, the corners are cracked. It's got tears in it. It's wild. All that to say, after doing all this process, they then like, oh yeah, please can you just go deposit uh, the check to get the visa. Cool. You will have heard uh, a sudden jump cut. And that's because... Some stuff had to be removed. We realized so. we were sharing too much information. <laughs> but oh, anyway, let me okay, not say look. Africa as well. <laughs> hey, by the way, Dan, um, I don't know if you heard. Uh, yo, we should we should hit up um, ZTA. We should hit up Chief. We should hit up Koti. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen. Like, we did a solid for the tourism industry in this country. <laughs> Took you out yeah, to get I it. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll see it that way. But ah, we did a solid. Um, hey guys, I don't lie. You know, Dan and I did an innocuous video. We're not going to specify what it was. To to us, it was innocuous, and we're very clear, guys. You know what it was? It was like, hey, can you guys send us a video that says this? Yeah, sure, no problem. No, Dan. no, no, no. There was there was obviously a premise, and then we're like, we're like, obviously, we're like, we want to make sure we don't touch anything controversial, nothing hot, hot topic. We just want to do something fun, mundane. Granted, we would have preferred like an entertainment question, but this was this was an entertainment adjacent, silly, fun question. I mean, to me, Dan, and to you, it felt like you know what, nothing. You you can't find fault with this. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a, there, what, what could possibly be wrong with this? What how, what about this is a hot button issue? Well, somehow Twitter found a way to make a hot button issue. Dan, I've been called all type of sellouts in my DM, in my mentions. I've been called all types of snakes. I've seen her catching strays. I'm like, guys. <laughs> so my question is, because so, I was asking the team, I was like, yo, so is this like under every post or is this, is this just special for us? Because it's wild. No, no, it's under, it's under every post. I, I did look. So, do you think it's bots or do you think these are people who are actually, like, fed up? You know what? It's probably a combination of both. Some people are, some people are, it's not that they're fed up. There's, there's agendas that they've bought into. Let me put it that way. They've bought into certain Guys, agendas. This is why I'm off social media because that was wild. Hey, you know what? Thank God I didn't have my phone. Because I only saw these when I was on the iPad and when I went on my laptop. Can you imagine getting these notifications live? And for that Sunday... Yes, yes, I can imagine that. <laughs> I can imagine that. Because, um, as you may know, that we went up on Sunday. So I was enjoying the Formula 1. I was I was lucky enough to be invited to, to a lovely home. A lovely home I told Dan about. Oh, the, the platter was... Mm, Dan, have you ever seen like just two giant salmon just laid out? And the host is, keeps walking by and saying, Phil... You're a big guy. You better eat all that salmon. I'm like, no, I'm trying to be blessed. She's like, no, 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 no. Eat that salmon. So, oh, well. Oh, you, I didn't know you were invited to the home. You just said they said hi. If okay, you cool, cool, if cool. you insist, <laughs> there was zucchini bread. Then I did not know such a thing existed. Zucchini, love mm, zucchini bread. Delicious. We had we had some kudu kudu burgers. You know what I mean? I was it was a lovely it was a lovely spread. So. I'm not going to shout out them in public. I, I'll let them know in private, but shout out to our hosts on Sunday. We had a lovely time. Watched, watched the Formula One in the cinema. You know what I'm saying? Lovely experience. You know, 
I thought I, I thought I'd enjoy Formula One, but in the cinema, <laughs> I mean, what more can you say? What right, more can you all say? Right, all right. Let's wrap this up, Philip. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> Boys and girls, thank you one more again. Hey, I still haven't done the the fantasy Premier League uh, setup. I'm going to create a little uh, registration form. I'll do it this weekend. So, oh yeah, definitely, me. definitely. Dan, I um, I forwarded you an email with the cost of the merch. Did you did you miss that? Did you did you miss that? I did not miss it. I saw it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I put it on my to do list. My to do list currently has forty things on it. Phil, yeah. I was looking Ch- at it Ch- the Ch- other day. Yeah. So four zero. We, we've now That's not we've now finally found a supplier of high quality merch, great quality merch, um, that's able to to, to ship worldwide. Ooh, quality is expensive, but our patrons have said money is not money is not an issue. So we shall see because we're doing we're not, we're not we're, we're, it's pre orders only. So you guys are gonna have to trust us. And uh, I think the how much was the the first invoice was for. Let me just cut. Let me just do the maths, because it was in, in rands. The first quote was for ten thousand dollars. Small, 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 small. I think our patrons can raise ten grand, right, Dad? <laughs> right. <laughs> Clearly, it's gonna have to not be like that. But uh, yeah. So look, um, I mean, people just have to pre-order, and then we we. Make that uh, yeah, but there's minimum quantities. We've we, we've got it. We, yeah, I know, but yeah. but the problem is the problem is we are making there's minimum quanti- quantities, but we are making multiple different things. So we just have to settle on on one or two things, and then we get orders on those things. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll talk. I'll, we'll talk. Off yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do it. Eight eight to ten weeks lead time. Ish. Right. Yeah, we can do it. You can I, do it. Oh, good. Do it. In fact, I actually, there's something I need to discuss with you over here. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us for another episode. Please don't forget to go to bertumbus.com forward slash donate. Newsletter coming out this week. Dan and I have finally started updating that. So we're going to start sharing that out with some updates of what we've been up to, what we've been doing. Uh, we might include this update that got us into hot water on Twitter. We'll, we'll see <laughs> if we want to just let it disappear into the ether. <laughs> I was just it was fun. Um, but yeah, man. Um, thank you guys for the support. We love you. Um, and yeah. Um, also there's something I need to speak to you off air about there's so much happening. There's so much happening. So uh we'll, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Let's see, what are we playing out with that? Um, we can throw on something great like <laughs> tomorrow's Friday, new music is dropping. What am I expecting? Who am I expecting music from? Um, we'll play something new from someone who drops tomorrow uh, when it comes out. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, when, it, when there'll be something new, something new and nice, something we like. I've got so much. When it comes I've, out. I've got so much to release stuff I want to drop, but I'm not gonna do it. But yeah, let this is maybe maybe. Oh yeah, no, that's gone. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not playing that one. I'm not playing that one. But yeah, this, yeah, this it's all good. We'll drop something for you guys. We always got you. We always got you anyway. All right. Um, yeah, so on that note, I guess uh, this is the marks the end of our podcast this week. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we will catch you in the next one. We out.
Move slow if you don't know. I break from the last one. I change for the last one. Listen, I need jumbo chaba. 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 